here at the Qualcomm booth here at Embedded World Nuremberg. And who are you? Good morning. So my name is Leon Farasadi. I'm uh, Director of Product Management. I uh, represent Snapdragon for Embedded Computing. And this is where we take our Snapdragon processors and we enable and prepare them for going into a you know, number of embedded applications. So let's go over to your Snapdragon wall over here. Sure. You have, a, a, for example, a whole bunch of Snapdragon 820, and it can go on uh, that, this small board here. Yeah, uh, this is that's very impressive. How uh, can it go so small? Yeah, so, you know, uh, we come from the mobile, uh, you know, mobile world. So in, in mobile, uh, you know, you have small size, you have uh, low power, because uh, these are, uh, you know, ARM-based devices. And, uh, you know, everything is really optimized as far as size and power. So you're getting a lot of performance. For example, in the case of 820, I mean, you're talking about four very powerful cores, 64-bit cores, very powerful GPU, very powerful DSP, all in a very small, uh, you know, very, very small processor. It's not uh, quite the 835, but it's the, it's the most powerful embedded chip in the world, no? Absolutely, absolutely, it, yeah. Uh, performance per watt. Intel is doing, right? <laughs> they, well, they will probably overheat. Performance per watt, you know, we've, uh, you know, we've really done optimization at a system level. So this is where you take, um, you know, everything, including your CPU, GPU, DSP, your video core, your audio core, uh, including the connectivity. So integrated Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, everything is optimized as a whole. That's why you can get so much power, so much performance in a micro SOM, system on module. And that's four this gigabyte size. RAM also. Absolutely, yes. Where's the RAM? There's no space. The RAM is actually... On the back? No, in this case, the RAM is package on package. So this is what they call pop memory. So okay. uh, the memory is stacked to get on top the of chip. the processor, yes. So the, what you see actually here is is the memory chip that's stacked on top of the, the that's processor. fantastic. What yeah. can this be used for? You can put this in the... Uh... Oh, just, I mean, what do you see uh, now? Uh, these uh, these modules are going into, you know, digital signage, of robotics, uh, medical imaging applications, uh, in-flight entertainment. So, I mean, just a number of things that you can do. Um, basically, the idea is that you're adding intelligence at the edge. So, for example, you can have a drone that's just taking some uh, dumb imagery, or you can have a drone that's doing the processing and only sending relevant information. We have another example here um, in the booth where you have a baby monitor, and um, I think it's... Maybe it's one of those? Um, You're gonna see a lot of uh, different examples here. Yeah. Um, there's another one here from Altia Systems. Um, this is... Hey. You have the business guys over uh, there. You need to persuade them. Is that the 820? 820 based, yeah. Right here. Exactly. Um, Can you so, show? Yeah. Uh, so, right, is that the one we were shooting? This is the one from e -info Chips, um, one of our technology providers. Let's look around it. So can you explain what's here? How do you connect this to stuff? So uh, most of these modules, uh, they have onboard connectors. And the idea is that everything you need is on this module. And then you have your own uh, you know, system board where this plugs into. So all you need on your system board is mating connectors where this is, this is going to plug into. And you see an example of that. Um, and this POP. And this thing. Yeah, this what one are those is, chips around here? The other uh, chips uh, typically is um, you have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth yeah. uh, front end. Um, yeah. You also have uh, onboard storage. Um, in the case of 820, you can have EMMC or you can have UFS um, as, as uh, onboard storage. And you also, every one of our processors comes with its own power management IC. So one of the chips that you see on there is your PIMIC which uh, does all the power management. Is there any chance you could put this all on the SOC? Well, the, you know, so the, the, uh, the PIMIC and the, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, these are RF, these are analog. So they have to, you know, they everything have to be that's, separate. Yes, everything that's baseband, everything that's digital is integrated into the SOC. You can't and make a chip that has both and everything and like only one chip and that's it. Well, you can't. For now, not. Because, of course, you need, uh, you, know, you need to have RF front ends and you need to have So that was not the Aragon. That's another one. Before it was uh, it's this is, Aragon. This, this is actually Aragon from the Info one. Chips. Yeah. yeah. That's so the the, one. The, here we're showing... Let's go over uh, here. This is a, uh, a company called uh, Altia Systems. They have created an embedded vision 
uh, device demo hey. based on the... Do you want, can, can I interview you? Actually, you can interview... Yeah. Uh, oh, sure. Hi. Yeah. So, so who are you? Uh, I'm Orang Zeb Khan. I'm the founder and CEO of Altia Systems. We're a California-based startup building the world's first real-time synchronized multi-camera system on the Qualcomm A20. Synchronized multi-camera. Right, so there are two miniaturized video cameras here. They're exactly the same like the smartphone. They're tiny. Yeah. And uh, we are synchronizing them to create a 130 degree 5.5 yeah. megapixel field of view. Um, and you're seeing that on the screen in front. 120. 130. 130. 130, 5.5 megapixel. And how does it merge in the middle? Uh, so that's the magic of our real-time stitching technology. You it's know, keeping you my right head close, inside the... Yes, it, it understands heads and it's trying to go around your head. <laughs> you notice it's real-time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so is there enough performance in the chip so you can do all this? Yes, yeah, it's a, a great chip. It's got all the right ingredients for us. Um, you know, real-time video actually pushes perf performance very hard. Uh, so we use about 70% of the GPU and about 30% of the CPU in an optimized pipeline, CL2.0 pipeline. So this is how it looks. It's very well merged in the middle. It's like smart merge, right? Yeah, exactly. It's dynamic stitching. So it processes 180 million pixels per second in the software pipeline Whoa. to figure out where to put the boundary. So you're giving them a lot of pixels. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. And, uh, are, you, are you working with the Panacast or is it different? Yeah, this is our product. This so is our commercial product. This has three in there. Yeah, this is the Panacast 2. It's uh, in high volume production and there's three running at 180 degrees. This one is based on an FPGA, and here we are generating the uh, scalable pipeline in software only. So you, this is FPGA, is not Qualcomm yet, right? This is not. But no. you could make a Panacast Qualcomm, right? Of course, yes. Because you're showing it off here. Yeah, that, and this can go into a lot of the modern applications for intelligent vision, right? Because we can do immersive video, real-time sensing, and connect through cellular or Wi-Fi to the cloud to big data. So we can um, you know, see what's coming, understand what's coming, and make decisions on what's coming. So this is AI? It is partially AI. It's, it's capable of uh, sensing and learning. It understands uh, objects and... Right now, for example, it understands faces. So it, it'll understand people's faces. It can give you count, location, and it can generally understand objects. And. Uh, um... So, what's it called? Could you do a whole globe? Of yes, spare? yes, of course. You, yeah, you could do you a 360. Need to with merge a few chips to do that, or you can do everything one, in one chip. One. One chip, you can do a 360, 4K. Yeah. But not 4K, 60, right? Not 60, 30 right now. 30. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, with with more technology, then of course. How many lenses do you need for four? Three. Three. For the whole. For the whole. Uh, all right. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of work for you to do, right? Yes. You have, and there's a lot of interest. Yes, we're getting a lot of interest. The first time being at this show, you know, we're selling into business applications, and now there's a lot of interest in industrial use cases. So, you know, cars, drones, people like that have come by, trains, highways, smart city infrastructure, cool. all of those kind of use cases. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank so you. let's go back to the Snapdragon wall that you yes, have. Yes, let's there. finish Thank over you. there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Because that was just the first board, but you have like uh, 80 boards right here, so it's gonna be. So uh, is this also 820? <laughs> yeah. These are so. This one is uh, from EP4 chips. That's the one. There's, there's another SOM uh, from uh, our technology provider, Inforce Computing, and of course you have the option of having a single board computer, um, where everything is already on the board. You don't uh, have to have your kind of system board. If uh, you want a single board computer, for example, you could take something like an uh, SBC. Yeah. So now this has uh, pretty much everything on board. So you, know, you could put an enclosure around this and that could be your final product. So it's, these are all production ready uh, boards or modules. It supports Android, but uh, this free Drino. So that enables you to have every Linux distribution. Yeah, one of so our focus for embedded, um, you know, of course we have Android coming from mobile, but our focus is uh, Linux, and we are working with Lenaro, um, which is a uh, open source uh, Linux organization, to upstream to the mainline kernel, and um, one of the things that um, has also been made available as part of this community enablement is uh, the uh, Freedrino driver, which is. Uh, you know, open source is uh, the you know the access to the GPU. So now, with uh, you know Snapdragon, you can go on developer.qualcom.com 
where you can get access to software images, um, whether it's Android, whether it's Linux. Even in the case of Snapdragon 410, we have Windows 10 IoT. Wow. Um, so Did they use Freedrino to enable that? Windows 10 IoT, no. Windows ah, 10 IoT has a special its own, partnership, right? It has its own drivers and it has its own. But everything is now available online. So this is without requiring any licensing yeah. or anything like that. And, uh, um, so, but for and then there's the Dragon Board. Let's, not, Dragon for, Board let's not forget the Dragon Board. So which has like uh, 12 Linux distros that work on it. Just like about everything, anything you everything can imagine, yes. So the, the beauty of Dragon Board, and I think we have one um, up here somewhere, um, right here. Yeah. So, the uh, beauty of Dragon Board is, Dragon Board is based on open hardware standard called 96 boards, um, yeah. which is uh, the idea that you have these two connectors. This is a low speed connector, this is a high speed connector, and it's and a standardized form factor. So now you have all these um, companies that are creating these mezzanine cards that are compatible with 96 boards. And Dragon Board is not the only board with 96 boards, there's multiple you know, other vendors. All SOC vendors that have created 96 boards compatible community boards. So um, you have now sensor boards, you have um, a company called Gumsticks, they've created a drone kit that goes yeah. on top of uh, the Dragon Board. So, uh, you know, now it allows you to do quick prototyping. Um, and uh, at the Linaro Connect, uh, I was, uh, I saw some uh, um early prototype of the 820, uh, so, but officially you can't say what, what's happening with that, or can you say something? Um, I can tell you that, uh, so there's a beta edition um, of the 820 uh, Dragon Board that we made available. Uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, uh, start the Linux development process. So Lenaro, who is the organization we work for Linux enablement, um, we're working with their developers and we're giving them these um, beta edition Dragon Boards so they can start the software enablement, they can start the upstreaming effort. So, uh, so yeah, I can tell you that uh, the first versions, the beta edition of Dragon Board is available. We made it, if you are a developer, if you are part of the Linux community, we'll be happy to work with you and give you uh, one of the beta editions. Yeah, because I saw uh, uh, Rob Clark was working on the. He was just showing uh, Freedrino yeah. working on the 820. That means there's going to be lots of very advanced Linux support. Right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean the the GPU, the graphics core subsystem in the 820 is is phenomenal. I mean the the uh, power that's in there. Uh, outside of just the CPU subsystem, the GPU and then the DSP, I mean, that, that combined, now you have tremendous power in an ARM-based system. And the DSP is able to do lots of AI kind of stuff, right? Absolutely. That's what they were doing over there? But is that open source? Are people, do they have access to that DSP? Um, today, you have uh, what, what we call it, a hexagon. Uh, hexagon is the name of our DSP. You have an SDK. Uh, so as a developer, you can uh, apply and get access to the SDK. Um, we're working on opening up more and more. So, I mean, this is uh, a lot of these things we're just getting started on. So, the DSP today, you have an SDK, and over time, we're going to do uh, open it up more and more. But yeah. the work Rob Clark has been doing with Freedrino, is, it sounds like a amazing kind of work to reverse engineer. Is there any chance that you would actually just say, hey? Here's the source for our drivers, and maybe there's a different performance, right? Maybe the official drivers have a little bit more. I wouldn't be able to comment on you that. You can't comment on yes. that, but who knows? Uh, but then you have uh, more demos right here. This, yeah, what I mean, is this one? Uh, so this is actually one of the first uh, 820 based. This is from uh, one of our other provi uh, technology providers, Intrinsic. Um, this is uh, the, they also have a song. So this this is a 820 module. Um, you know, they put a little um, passive sync on it to get more performance out. And this is a complete board um, with many, many connectors on it. So this allows you to, again, do a lot of, um, you know, attach different peripherals and different type of components. Um, this is another also. super small, this is that SOM that's um, on that Some board. There. So this is the intrinsic SOM, uh, A20 based SOM. Why do you have a heat sink? Is because they want to use peak performance, yeah, constant yeah, peak they, performance? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to get more, uh, you know, if you want to run basically all the CPUs at maximum frequency, then you can add a, you know, add a fancy. Um, another one I wanted to point out, this is uh, one of the newer uh, boards uh, from one of our other partners, Inamind. Here, what they did is they uh, integrated a WAN, so basically cellular uh, data on the Snapdragon 410. Is there so, a SIM card slot? 
Yeah, this one gives you a SIM card slot, and now you can have uh, integrated LTE and 3G um, on, on this song. So this is one of the new things, I think. This is the first time we're showing this product. Because you're showing over here, you have LTE for IoT. But this is just a bunch of modems? These, these are standalone modules. So these are where you want to add um, connectivity to, to a system that you have. In the case of the kite board, um, you have now Snapdragon with integrated uh, cellular connectivity. So that's a new one that we're showing here. And then up there, you're seeing all the modules uh, and, uh, and boards based on the Snapdragon 410. I mean, 410. Uh, I have to also add one of the uh, keystones of our program, the embedded program, is the longevity. So we made a press release last year where we announced Snapdragon 410 and 600 so far. That's where you see the E, 410E and 600E. Um, we've announced our commitment to make these uh, processors available till 2025 or longer. So, um, and that, you know, that gives the, uh, the vendors, including the SOM vendors and end customers, really that extended life. So if you're going into an industrial application, if you're going into, say, a medical device, where it takes sometimes two to three years before the device can even come out to market, um, they now have the assurance that uh, the, the uh, system on chip, the SOC, is going to be available uh, till you know, 2025. So C is for community and E is for extended uh, life? Or? or embedded or extended life. Yeah. For me, embedded and extended life really go, go hand in hand. Because in order to be a truly an embedded processor, you need to have that extended life. You need to be able to, um, you know, if you design in something, we don't want you to have to be forced to change your processor two, three years down the road. So we're giving them that 10 year um, longevity. Let's see, look at some of the other uh, boards you have here. Actually, there's a few boards here also being shown for the first time. These are from uh, some local um, uh, board vendors, you know, Kaif and Club. Uh, German company. Uh, this and is they their, put a 410 on here. Yep, that's a this a 410 SOM with its uh, development board uh, with a lot of industrial interfaces that they've broken out. Um, this is so they have these two different four factors um, using the same SOM, but they have two different industrial four factors. Uh, we have another uh, also local board vendors, Caro. Um, this is their uh, 410 based. 410E based system, and of course, uh, you already saw Intrinsic uh, and E4 chips. Um, here's another uh, company, also uh, came out with their um, uh, you know, fairly new board uh, company Genia called Geniatech. Yep. They have a saw and a single board computer. Nice, they have a booth here, so I'm going to try to find them. Yes. So, so, so uh, the this one has the can message is what we're trying to show with this wall is the ecosystem. <laughs> of uh, hardware and software around Snapdragon is really growing. And that's the goal. That's the this goal. This here is another, the tiny, the, maybe the smallest, by Geniatech also. What is this? That's also a 410E based uh, song. Very, very small, uh, very compact. Um, and um, also, I, I should also mention Verisite. Um, they've been one of our uh, song vendors as well. Uh, they have a 410E based song. So is it possible that many of these projects were kind of like uh, kickstarted by the 410C communities uh, yes. start doing yeah. stuff, so and when then after they uh, they inquire some more advanced stuff, like and they, they contract some some designs or something. Of course, when you go so 410C really serves the Dragon Ball really serves a few purposes for us. One is it's a it's a evaluation vehicle. So if you want to see uh, whether this processor works for you, that's your first. It's available globally through Aero Electronics. So anybody can go and grab one from Aero. Even a, um, a version of it is available through Amazon. So you have a number of ways to get the board. Two is you can, um, as, a, as a maker, as a hobbyist, as an enthusiast, you could use the board to do uh, development, prototyping, a number of things. And three, it's also reference design. So if you're creating a module, or if you're creating um, a, even a custom board, you can use the Dragon Board as your reference. Because the schematics, and uh, everything you need, the documentation, board documentation, everything is available publicly online. So, um, with that, I have to say, uh, you know, I have to say goodbye because we're I'm going. I have to go to my next. But uh, hey, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, you know, feel free to look around. This is just Snapdragon. We got a lot, a lot more things here. We have 
a number of things on the, uh, you know, all the modules for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LTE. I mean, look around, and of course, automotive. Well, the wall is a huge wall over there. Wi-Fi. So take a look Bluetooth. around. There's things with our automotive connected car. Number of things. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks thank you. Thank you for the video.